My Well One is a first in human study. It's a prospective 30 patient study performed at multiple centers looking at 30 day, uh, six months and one year outcome. 30 patients were enrolled into the study. These were patients with severe aortic stenosis who, had, who were moderate to high risk for surgical aortic valve replacement. This study looked at the 12 month outcomes of an indigenously designed and developed transcatheter heart valve. So this is a balloon expandable valve. Uh, and most of the balloon expandable valve are of a similar genre, except that this that device has certain characteristics to it. It's got uh, hexagonal cells, and, uh, and there are open cells in the upper half, closed cells in the lower half. It's got PTFE covering on its lower half to decrease the incidence of paravalvular leak. But its unique features are that it actually is practically mounted on a balloon, uh, and the balloon has two stoppers to prevent the valve migration. And it's got a very simple, uh, flexible uh, delivery system. And the handle is, is intuitively so simple that it's practically like crossing the valve across the aortic arch, flexing the, the handle, and then deploying it directly almost like a stent. So there are no multiple steps involved in it. In a way, it's a very simple process of deployment. And also, it's a valve which goes through a very uh, a 14 French sheath and can also be retracted back into the sheath if the need arose. So in a number of ways, it's been one of our very user-friendly devices which got created in India. One-year data showed that the survival, which was the primary endpoint of the study, was 85% in this subgroup of patients who were at intermediate and high risk for a surgical aortic valve replacement. The mean age of these patients was 75. But importantly, and this is normally the expected uh, survival even with the best of the valves at period of one year. So we did well on the survival. There were no device-related complications. Uh, there was no device-related mortality. All the mortality related to things like sepsis at six months time unrelated to the device, uh, renal failure related to the procedure but not the device, and then two incidents of uh, one of sudden cardiac death and one of a non-cardiac death related to cancer. So the valve did very well up to a year. What was also seen was the effective orifices areas which were achieved at the time of implantation with a significant improvement in effective orifice area was maintained up to a year. The decrease in mean gradient which occurred after, after valve implantation was maintained up to a year and there were no incidents of stroke or uh, new pacemaker implantation in any of these patients and neither was there any moderate to severe paravalvular leak. So on all fronts, the valve performed well and met the end, end, end points of safety and efficacy in this first inhuman study at one year. I think what's happening around the world is that on one hand, TAVI is now becoming the standard of care, especially with the recent trials of low risk patient showing its superiority in many ways over surgical aortic valve replacement. And when it's becoming the standard of care, we're looking at more and more and younger patients having transcatheotic valve replacement. But we also must understand that in the milieu of the constrained healthcare spends, times now to come at innovations from across the world, which would not just bring in new devices, which could actually have even more better, which, which would be easier to implant and be more intuitively simpler in multiple ways, but also be cost effective. And any such innovations coming from across the world have to be complemented because they're going to bring the cost of transcatheotic valve replacement down, certainly in the developing countries and more so also in process of time in what we call the developed countries.